So we're gonna start in CDED today and um, what we'll do is we'll just kind of um, move into the hip area a little bit. We'll have a little seat before we then um, move into the rest of the practice. So before we work with the hips, you could take the soles of the feet together and then finding a wee bit of a rock. You know how we always start with the uh, often start with the uh, arch and flatten the lower back, the pelvic rock. So let us try to find that from from the seated. You could do uh, soles of the feet together if that for any reason doesn't work. You could also keep your feet on the mat. But I'm trying to isolate the movement to this lower part of the spine. So rocking back on the sit bones and then rocking forward on the sit bones. And even if the other parts of the spine move as well, that's totally fine. But I'm feeling this relationship between the pelvis and the lower back. And just gently imagine what is happening right now is that your, your thigh bones are steady and your pelvis is rocking around the thigh bones. So just a few more rounds. Often we do this one on the back. And then letting the upper part of the spine slowly begin to move as well. Hi, Jacin, I'm going to mute you. Yeah. Yes, so we're going to start to bring the movement now into the middle of the spine as well. And sometimes I like to touch the front of the sternum to kind of get the feel of this area. So moving from here, but also moving from the back of the heart. So see how the touch can help to connect to a certain part of the body. Mm -hmm. Go a few more times. I'm just checking. Yes. And then let yourself have the neck very consciously come into the movement as well. So now you feel kind of the whole surface of the back and then the whole surface of the front. And then see how your breath wants to move. We are very um, used to breathing in when the front opens and then breathing out when the front contracts and the back opens. Sometimes I intentionally breathe the opposite way. I breathe in when the back is open and broad, and then I exhale, just to mix things up a little bit. And it can feel really good to let this um, back of the lungs actually broaden and find that sense of spaciousness there. So we go a couple of more rounds. And then next time when you move through the center, take your hands back behind you, walk the feet a bit wider, take the feet onto the mat, and then let's go with the windshield wiper movement where we move from side to side. And as the knees move, just let your head and neck move the opposite direction. And we go at first like this log roll where the knees are going to move at the same time. And then we're going to create more like one part of the body is going to lead and the rest of the body is going to follow. So when your knees are over on the right side next, what if the left knee is the one that leads? So I always need to slow down a little bit. So it's going to open to the point where I feel restriction. And then I'm going to let the pelvis move and then there's this ripple effect that takes the knees over to the other side. So then the right knee leads. And go a few times like that. So there's like this kinetic chain. And right now my hands are grounded, right? But what if 
Next time when I'm turning, my left knee is lifting. The rest of the body is following. What if I let the right arm also rotate over to the side where the knees are? And on my way back, I'm going to let the arm lead. The chest is going to turn, then the spine. And then the wave comes into the hips. Find a pace I often need to slow down to really isolate the movements a little bit more. To allow that sequence to move through the different joints. And then what are some shapes so when the arm moves down, you could round the back as well. When the arm lifts up, there could be a little bit of like a back bend. So see if this wave can move through these different parts of the body for a few more rounds. And then I'll pause when I'm on my left side. So the left knee has turned over. And I'll take the legs, so the <coughs> sorry. So they are kind of like in this 90, 90 degree angle. So the left knee, sorry, that's the right knee is coming right out of my hip, foot is back um, underneath the knee. I'll face over that left shin bone and I'll do a few times with my fingertips right in front. I'm gonna lean forward, but I'm gonna press that left shin bone into the ground. So I'll just be quite active here. And I use my hands on the ground to kind of manage how deep I go, pressing the shin bone down and rising. When you feel quite confident in it, you could take the hands, I like to place them on the, on my lower back. And I keep pressing that front shin bone, left shin bone down onto the ground. So the muscles and there's engagement on my way down and on my way up around that right. No, that's your left, left hip. Cool. And then next time when I lean in, I'm going to find more of a yin shape. So I'm going to use my hands. If you need to change the configuration of the legs a little bit to find more comfort also in that right hip, you can stay palms down, you could go forearms down. We're going to go for a mild yin stretch here where I'm finding an um, angle where I feel sensation in that right hip area, but it's not intense. And instead of pressing down and creating muscle contraction, now I'm going to find if I can find a different um, sensation or different approach where I'm actually relaxing these outer layers of the body. And sometimes I need to let my mind also walk through areas that are nowhere near that left hip. So like my jaw and my face and maybe the tongue in the mouth. I check my belly so that the soft breath can come in. And then possibly also upper back and shoulders. Can they soften just a little bit more? This is like a precursor for our meditation. <laughs> where we're paying attention to our direct experience. So what are some of the sensations that are present, but also possibly some of the thoughts, some of the response or reaction? So through my physiology, I'm communicating a sense of calm and okayness and if you add an edge where that's not possible, then you need to back off a little bit. Just notice what arises for a couple of more breaths.
and then slowly slowly I'm gonna rise before we do the same thing on the opposite side I'm gonna bring the legs to the center and I'm just for a moment gonna straighten them just lean back onto my hands to observe just to feel that left hip left leg then possibly have a little bounce through the legs where they bounce on the ground where they flop in and out and then slide both feet back onto the ground and before we do the opposite side just going a few times knees dropping in unison Then we had the one knee lifting and initiating and leading. So in your own body, find that. And then in what way could the upper body get involved as well? What was that rotation? And you can play the shapes in your body might arise a wee bit differently than in my body. So can we be also somewhat spontaneous and curious? And then I'll pause when I'm over that right leg. Doesn't have to be super exact, the configuration of the legs. And what I didn't say on the other side, if you're really dropping over onto that right side, you can wedge a blanket under that right knee, right buttock, sorry. At first, use the hands a bit so you have more control, but be active through the muscles in that around that right hip as you lean in. And seriously, it can be any amount of leaning in. Any amount of leaning in. But use the hands at first. Is it freezing from time to time? No, others are saying no, Judy. And then if you wish, you could take the hands off and lean in and out, pressing the front shin, the front knee down onto the ground, both on the way down and on the way up. And just experience the, the contraction that I'm asking or the kind of the engagement that I'm asking for around that right hip area. And then at one point we're going to settle into a yin way to, how would I say, to exercise that hip. So I'm going to hover over that right knee and thigh, palms down or elbows down. You can change the position of the heel, the front heel. You can change the position of the back knee. Find the sensation in that right hip that works, where there's, where there's a certain se stretchy sensation there, but it's not too much. Then I'm going to have that intention of softening the structures around the right hip, around the right buttock. So the way we, the one thing that we do have control over is how we use our attention, how we use our focus. And often I play with going more locally, going more into the sensation where there is a certain like more intensity or where I feel the posture. I let my attention move there for a moment. And then I, then I could also, so to speak, zoom out. <laughs> I could lean back and I could feel more the whole of the body. So there's not just one thing happening. I can hold um, several aspects of this moment. And just a couple of more breaths.
and then let us slowly transition up and out. As you come back to the center, we'll again take a little moment where you can stretch the legs forward. You can just hang back. Maybe a moment where everything becomes still, so you experience the right leg inhabiting the right leg, right hip. And then a wee bit of, <laughs> someone just joined me, <laughs> so um, here, um, in person. <laughs> and uh, flopping the legs. And so we've moved the spine, we've moved the hips. What if we pause before we go forward with our flow for about two or three minutes? So we have our meditation, we sneak our meditation in in the middle of our session. So you could sit cross-legged, but if there's another seat that works for your body better, if you need to sit yourself higher, knowing that, you know, even if it's a couple of minutes, taking care is important. So finding that seat where your attention can be a little bit more free in terms of nothing is really too much like painful or achy. You could keep your eyes open, but then keeping them soft and the peripheral view open so you're not necessarily um, zooming in on anything specific or you're keeping your eyes closed. You feel the bony structures of your body, how they can support you in the most optimal way in a sense that the shoulders can soften, the lower back feels supported. Nice. And here too, your attention could be anchored. You could choose one specific aspect of this moment, like often we use the breath, so attention could be more anchored on one detail of your experience. And I use that when my mind is a little bit more kind of erratic and a little bit busy, so I give it a focus and an anchor. And on days when the mind feels more spacious, I can practice open awareness. So I can notice anything and everything that pops up on the screen of my awareness. So it could be the sounds from your environment, it could be the breath, sensations, thoughts. Everything is allowed in. So for another two minutes, let's pause and train our attention, our focus, to bring it back to this moment. And then however you're sitting, let your hands come in front of your lower abdomen with the palms facing up. It's a, it's a nice gesture for what we were doing. So the hands just in front of the lower belly. And then your right arm circles up, gathers attention. And then there's this centering where the hand comes down through the midline. And then it comes back to its original position by the lower abdomen and then the left hand goes. So it's kind of this nice um, gesture. It's from Qigong of centering, gathering, finding your center, 
the hand comes down, and then the post palms facing up. And we come to our wee bit of a flowy part. So you could um, come and face the long end of your mat, and you can choose kind of the way that you are facing the screen the best. So we're going to move through a squat. So I'm going to take the hands back behind me, the soles of the feet onto the ground, and then wiggle myself over onto a squat. If you need to place something under your heels, you could. We're going to find the containment here where we bring the hands in front of the chest and for a moment I'm going to press the knees against the elbows and the elbows against the knees and just again sense what happens around the hips, the musculature all switching on a bit more. And relax that effort, you could take your hands down and even round your spine and let your chin come into your chest. So you more kind of, uh, I mean, you need to hold yourself up, but I'm not squeezing so much. And then do that one more time. So find the activation, the action, the engagement. And maybe don't give it your 100%, give it like your 80%. <laughs> not rigid. It's still pliable. And... Um, I lost my f word for a moment, and then let yourself round. Breathe into that back space again. And then take the fingertips onto the ground and begin to lift your hips up. And as the hips lift, you might need to m move your feet and so the toes are pointing more forward. The feet can stay wider than the hips. Just feel kind of into the backs of the legs, soften the knees. Let your spine drape downward, head heavy. <sighs> I like to do a little bit of bouncing, but it could also be just a wee bit of knee softening and straightening just to feel into that back line. Sometimes I yeah, bounce my bum up in the ear, so a little springiness. And then we're going to walk the feet wider into that wide-legged forward fold stance, so Bhattachanasana stance, so I'm toe-heeling my, my feet a bit wider. Hands can stay under the shoulders. And then we'll explore the hips from here by bending into the right knee and shifting the hips over to the right and grounding the left foot down onto the ground straightening the right knee and then walking the hands over towards the left and bending into the left knee. So at your own pace, go a few times from side to side and then I'll give different variations of this and you can stay with what works for you this morning. So notice how I'm walking the hands, part of your body weight can be um, leaning onto your hands so there's less weight around the hips. So the second option would be to take the hands off the ground. You could experiment rather than one knee straightening and the other knee bending. Imagine like you're underneath a low table and you need to glide from side to side. So there's this gradual moving from one side to the next. And then finally, how would you include the upper body in it? So maybe the opposite elbow is going to travel towards the opposite knee. Make sure your feet are not too wide or too close. So just find that stance that works. Just a couple of more working around the hips. Perfect. <laughs> and then next time when you're through the center so find a wide-legged forward fold again whether your hands are under your shoulders or maybe they walk a little bit further back so they're more in line with the knees the fingertips let the ground of the head drop downward and let the breath maybe once or twice move out through the mouth so there's a breath in and it as it moves out there's this ha <sighs> The legs are strong, but like the upper body structures can a little bit receive the kind of the, the pull of the gravity. Just one or two more like this. 
<sighs> and then I walk my hands under the shoulders. I soften the knees. I get ready to curl up from here. So pressing the feet down and take your time, come up to standing. <laughs> we haven't been standing, so just take a little moment. We keep the legs wide and open, but maybe there's a little shuffle, a little movement through the hips. And we're going to find a high squat from here, so the toes are going to point out. I move a little bit from side to side to kind of again establish that place where I feel nice and stable. I can have my roots extending down, the knees are more or less pointing to the direction of the toes. And you could be higher up, you could be lower down, depending again, the stimulation around the hip, hip area. And then the hands can come kind of onto the thighs. We're going to turn the chest over towards the right knee, lean in towards the right knee, and then half circle over towards the left, and then rise back up. So you make this half arc. I'm going to go forward on the exhale and rise on the inhale, but it's not an exact science. It th the breath doesn't have to be exactly like that. Just make sure a nice smooth breath is moving. You could always rise a little bit higher to give your hips some br a break. Mm -hmm. Now, as you move, as the upper body moves, can you feel the four corners of your foot pressing down? So neither are you collapsing into the inner arch, nor are you collapsing into the outer arch. So just feel the root system. And this is a little bit more of a clear form. And then I'm going to give you a form that's a little bit more watery. So next time when you're through the center, see if you can start the movement from your ribs of this sideways movement like a seaweed. And sometimes I need to bring my tickly fingers onto the ribs to kind of find the lead of the ribs rippling from side to side and the spine and the head are kind of receiving that movement. Yeah, just going a little bit from side to side chest. Imagine the goodness that it does for the spine as it opens and closes in this lateral view, the, the spine and the structures around the spine. Just a couple of more. Perfect. And then through the center, let yourself rise. Let's get out of the hips for a moment. Take the toes and point them forward. <sighs> Let's take a breath in and the arms are going to rise and you can hold your right wrist with your left hand. And as the arms come up, just a little lean to the back, just so much that the back doesn't complain. Inhaling. Exhale, fold forward. Switch the hands at the bottom so you hold the opposite wrist. Bend the knees, kind of curling up, pressing the feet down as you rise. And then again, either straight up or again, if the spine is fine with a little lean back, you do that. And then a slow exhale as you fold. Let's go up one more time, rising. And then once you're up, let the hands lower. <sighs> We're going to take the toes out one more time. This time kind of a little bit um, yoga-ish. <laughs> so we're going to lean over to the right. Take your right elbow onto the right thigh and then point the left heel out. So you have the back leg go straight. And even though that front foot is at a tiny bit of an angle, it's not exactly pointing out, let that be okay so that the foot is at a bit of an angle. And then drop the left hand and then reach the left hand up and feel, if you can feel the connection from that left heel to the hip, to the fingertips, breathe into that sideline. And then as the hand drops, turn the left heel in so that you can circle over to the opposite side. So the left elbow on the left thigh, right heel points out. And then tangle the right arm down first and then it finds its momentum, it lifts, and then you create intentional tension through that sideline 
but just again maintain some of the softness as well. Take a breath and can you feel the pathway through the sideline of the body? And then we'll switch again. So it kind of collapses a bit down. The right heel points in so you can switch the elbow and turn the left heel. See if you can find your own pace and again some curiosity here. What can you sense? What can you feel? Can you find a rebound from the ground so I'm not you know, putting too much weight onto that elbow on the thigh? And just rhythmically a few times going from side to side. <sighs> Excellent. I'll finish on the left side, then we should be nice and even. <laughs> Good. And then next time, when you move through the center, coming back up to standing, one more time, pointing the toes in, taking a breath, rising up, inhaling. And then as you exhale, fold forward, and we stay in that forward fold. I'm going to take my right hand under my face, and then the left hand is going to thread behind the right hand towards the right foot. And I'm going to bend into the right knee as that happens. And I'm going to float the arm up towards the sky and straighten through the left knee, so through the right knee. And then I'll pulse a few times, threading the arm through and then lifting it up. If lifting the straight arm doesn't feel good, you could keep the elbow bent and letting the left elbow lead rather than the arm. Let's go a few more times. And then next time when the arm is up, experiment so you have your left arm up but then begin to reach the fingertips forward be beyond your head with the palm facing down. So again, I want to find this length through the left side of the body, reaching and slightly moving the outer left hip back and then turning back upward towards the ceiling, towards the sky, maybe one or two more times. So the sideline, side body long <laughs> and then up. I like to inhale when the arm reaches and turn on the exhale. One last breath. And then let's release through that left arm. Again, maybe the knees soften, letting the, the backs of the hands come more towards the ground. Just a little moment of ah a seaweedy, more watery quality through the spine. And then the same twist exploration for the other side where the left hand can come under your face and the right hand is going to do the moving. So threading behind that left hand, left knee can bend and then right arm floating up towards the sky. So a few times pulsing like that. And then next time when the arm is up, we explore that forward movement where the fingertips come forward, palm down towards the ground or parallel to the ground. And then from this space, rotating back up towards the ceiling. One or two more. And then next time, I'm going to let the hand come down onto the ground. Again, just finding a little bit of a wiggle through the hips or the ribs, shaking the head out. 
before I begin to walk the feet closer again so they come to that position where I can begin to squat down like we did before. Pausing in the squat for a moment, either that more active squat or the little bit more passive one. <sighs> and then let's take the hands back behind. Let's sit the bum down. Release the legs forward and have them at a wee bit of a angle wider in front of you. And then I'll do a couple of times where I have the left leg, I have the toes point out and I slide the heel towards my hip. And then I slide it back straight and I flop it. And I'll just do that for that left side a few times. So I turn the foot out, I slide it up, feeling the hip, and then I slide it back straight and then I just flop it. My eyes automatically close. That helps me to connect to the sensations of the movement. They don't have to be closed. And then next time when I slide the heel up, I'm going to keep it there sitting a bit higher up. So kind of getting ready for a forward fold from here. But before we do that, I'm going to bend and bring the right foot onto the mat and I'm gonna tap hi Johnny <laughs> I'm gonna tap the back of that right leg that is gonna be stretching so I just bring some awareness there I even lift my palm off I maybe like um, as if you're gonna put some lotion or nice essential oil on and then as you set up your forward fold, you could have the leg go a little bit at an angle. That means that your spine is going to come to forward fold and a lateral movement. So you might feel it a little bit more on that left waistline or you could keep it coming straight forward. If there's any props that you need to use for your forward fold to support the left knee or put something under that right leg. The way I like to come uh, forward is into my forward folds these days is to have it be a wee bit more active when I first come in. So I feel the engagement in the leg and the kind of the so-called lift through the spine. I feel the engagement and then at one point I let it soften more into a yin version where the outer layers are going to soften and I imagine the kind of the stimulation kind of sinking into some deeper deeper layers there but I'm going to stay at a really soft edge and then there's our meditative moment again little uh, opportunity to train the attention to build the capacity to be with what's present in the moment. If distractions arise, we're conscious of them and then we can intentionally bring the attention back. But can this be also playful? Can we stay curious? So another minute or so.
So over the course of next breaths, you could slowly begin to push the hands onto the ground and curl up. You can always stay longer, you could always stay uh, less amount of time as always. And then as you slide the legs straight, just pause for a moment again. Let your attention move through the right side and the left side. And then maybe notice what's in the foreground of your experience. Is it a sensation, a thought, a sound from your environment? Like, can you notice where is the attention kind of gravitating towards? And then bring intentionally that focus to your right leg. So the right toes are going to turn out and the heel is going to slide up. And the leg is going to slide straight and flop and be passive for a moment. So feel that a few times. What's happening around the hip, around the inner thigh. And then next time when a heel comes up, just keep it. You could adjust it. I'm going to walk myself sitting a bit higher up. I'm going to take the left foot onto the ground and I'll take a um, little approach where I'm kind of like prepping the area that's going to receive some stretching. I'm going to tap it or you can stroke it. You can find a touch that feels good this morning. Bum, lower back is good. <laughs> and then based on your, like what you feeling in your body, you can set up the shape. You can set up the shape that includes maybe a little bit of a lateral, lateral movement or not. You don't have to do the exactly same that you did on the other side. And then you can play with, do I go into it more actively, more passively? So we use this terminology often, yin and yang. Do I more engaged, more the muscle structures on, or do I soften from the surface of the body towards the center of the body? You decide. And then what's the difference of letting kind of letting the body decide? So in, I'm not so much coming from an idea, but I'm just sensing into. Can I feel where's my yes, where's my no? Little oscillating movements, little explorations. And then perhaps the stillness then can more naturally arise or come to the foreground if we're not forcing it. Maybe you can stay for a wee bit longer if you need to change the edge, the shape do, but stay with the uh, attention, with the presence. And then slowly 
I'm going to rise. We'll take a little pause again and now you can see how as you as you notice the last shape and its resonance in the in the posture also see how you want to finish this session. So you could lie on your back for a couple of minutes. I'll hold space if you want to stay longer. You can silence me. <laughs> do you want to do one more meditation? A short meditation, longer meditation? Is there a shape that I didn't offer that your body needs right now? Sometimes the 45 minutes for some of you maybe is just a warm up and you just want to continue. So you have that choice as well. So I'll hold space for another two, three minutes here for you. If you want to move at your own pace, then uh, I'll wish you a good, good week. <laughs> so take a little, um, and again, can that position come maybe by tuning in? And if your body could speak, what would it want? What would it say? Stay as you are, or if you're finishing together, wherever you're at, you could find the kindest way back to your seat. And we could finish with the same gesture with um, hands in front of the lower abdomen. This time, though, we could draw the right arm up. And as it comes down through the center, it could pause in front of your heart. Then the left hand draws and gathers the benefits from the practice. And then there's a centering and alignment of, let us say, body, mind, spirit. There's a congruence. They meet the hands in front of the center. Possibly a little bow towards the hands. Gratitude for showing up for yourself, for your practice.